By the spring of 1948, Menon became almost a permanent resident at Ananda Kutir, working remotely by mailing his newspaper articles to Delhi. One day, he got a letter from his cousin Bhaskar Menon, a devout and religious young man who desired to lead a spiritual life. Menon introduced him to Swami Shivananda, who eventually initiated him into sannyasa as Swami Nyanananda. This Swami was longing to visit the Char Dham or the four holy shrines in the Himalayas, namely Yamunotri, Gangotri, Kedarnath and Badrinath. He invited Menon to join him on this extremely difficult journey. Now Menon was a self-confessed avoider of any form of exercise. In one of his newspaper articles in the National Herald, Menon expressed his view of exercise by quoting Robert Hutchins. Whenever I feel like doing exercise, I just lie down until the feeling goes away. But when Menon got the invite for the Char Dham trek, he agreed instantly and enthusiastically. And thus began a crucial two-month physical and spiritual adventure that would forever transform Menon, leading him to both renunciation and enlightenment. Around 200 million years ago, India was a large island situated off the Australian coast. As the continents began to form, India started to forge northward for the next 150 million years, finally crashing into Eurasia. This began the formation of the Himalayas. The word Himalayas comes from Hima, which means snow, and Alaya, which means abode or place. This grand chain of white-capped mountains stretches out 1,500 miles in length. These are the youngest and biggest mountains on Earth. 30 of the world's tallest mountains are here, all about 24,000 feet, with Mount Everest, the king of them all, at 29,000 feet. Besides being a majestic mountain range, the Himalayas are also the third largest deposit of ice and snow in the world, after the Arctic and the Antarctic. There are over 15,000 glaciers located throughout the range. It should come as no surprise then that the Himalayas are the source of our biggest and most sacred rivers, the Ganga, the Yamuna and the Brahmaputra which give life to hundreds of millions of Indians. The Ganga, India's holiest of rivers, is home to many spiritual centers where Hindus come to bathe and cleanse their karmas. Each morning at dawn, the Arati is offered to Mother Ganga, a ritual that has continued for thousands of years. To reach its destination in the deltas of the Bay of Bengal, the Ganga has flowed for over 1,500 miles across northern India's hot and crowded plains, sustaining life throughout its journey. Starting in the cold, tall mountains of the Himalayas, the source of the Ganges is believed to be this holy place, Gangotri. When Goddess Ganga decided to come down to earth for the aid of humankind, it was feared that the impact of her descent would have destroyed the planet. 
So Lord Shiva intervened. At Gangotri, he caught the falling river in the locks of his hair, cushioning her arrival and channeling the flow of this mighty river into smaller tributaries. But the Ganges can be traced back even beyond Gangotri. Twelve miles further up in the mountains is Gomuk, the cow's mouth, an ice cave from which flows a milky stream. At 13,000 feet above sea level, Gomuk is the mouth of the Gangotri glacier which stretches for more than 30 kilometers. The journey to Gomuk is so difficult that it takes the most ardent devotee to make this trip once in a lifetime. Swami Tapovan came here regularly each year and usually barefoot, unimaginable. Even higher than that, up above the glacier, there is more running water. If the source of a river is the point farthest from the sea, then it is here in the meadows of Tapovan, surrounded and protected by mighty peaks, including the beautiful Shivling mountain, is the spiritual and geological source of the Ganges. It was to such a rich land sheltered by the Himalayas and nurtured by its sacred rivers, that Balakrishna Menon would spend the next month traveling over 300 miles of mountains by foot, weathering some of the steepest ascents, treacherous slopes, cold temperatures, but in the end obtaining a clear vision of the goal which was God-realization. 